Hello, I am Kathy Adams Clark and thank you very much for joining me on my channel today. The topic of today's video is should I buy the Canon EOS R6 Mark II or should I buy the Canon EOS R7? So what we've got right now in Canon is two super nice cameras, both of them introduced about the same time, and people are weighing whether they should buy one camera there or the other. So here's my advice and here's my recommendations. Now, first of all, let's look at the difference between the two cameras. The R6 Mark II costs $2,499 US dollars on the market right now. The R7, on the other hand, cost $1,499. So between those two cameras right now, we've got a $1,000 difference. And that might make a big difference to a lot of people. So I think if pocketbook is an issue, then the R7, hands down, is going to be the best camera for you. Now, specs, sizes. The R6 is just a tiny bit larger than the R7. But the R6 Mark II is only a tenth of a pound heavier than the R6. So we're not dealing with much weight at all, but we do have a slight weight difference and a slight size difference between them. The R7 is a tiny, tiny bit smaller. Um, so weight, not too much of an issue. Focus points, on the other hand, we have 1053 focus points in the Canon EOS Mark II, and we have 651 focus points on the R7. Now, don't think that that's a really, really big deal because the 7D Mark II, flagship camera for a lot of bird photographers out there, had 65 focus points. And now we're dealing with the difference between 1,053 focus points and 651 focus points. So we got a lot of focus points in both of the cameras. ISO range is taking us from 100 to 102,400 in the R6 Mark II, and it's taking us from 100 to 32,000 in the R7. Phenomenal IS, no matter which camera you choose, but you are going to get a higher ISO rating in your R6 Mark II. High-speed shooting, which is important to, for us in bird photography and sports, high-speed shooting, you can get 12 frames per second in the R6 Mark II, and you can get 15 frames per second in the R7. Interesting, because the R7 gives you a little bit more frames per second. Put this in perspective, the older model of the R6 had 8 frames per second, so now the R6 Mark II is twice that at 12 frames, frames per second. If we go to high speed in the electronic shutter, the R6 Mark II gives us 40 frames per second, and the R7 gives us 30 frames per second. Phenomenal for both cameras, but slightly less in the R7. But let's put this in perspective. The original R6 gave us 12 frames per second versus 40 frames per second in high-speed electronic. The 7D Mark II gave us 10 frames per second. So now in the R7, we can go to 30 frames per second when we're in electronic shutter. So we're doing really, really well no matter which camera you decide to upgrade to. That 30 frames per second in the R7 is going to give those of you moving from your 7D Mark II nearly three times as many frames per second when you're in electronic shutter. So that's a real, real strong advantage. Your sensor size in the R6 Mark II is a full sensor camera and you have 6,000 pixels on the longest side and 4,000 pixels on the shortest side. So the R7 has a cropped sensor, a little bit smaller sensor, but it has 6960 pixels on the longest side by 4640 pixels on the shortest side. So it's got a lot of depth to it. That means that your megapixels in your R7 are 32.5 megapixels 
and in your R6 Mark II, 24.2 megapixels. So your file sizes are a little smaller in your R6 Mark II than they are in your R7. But remember, you're dealing with different sensor size. So it just means that we're not going to be able to crop as much with that R7 sensor as we would with the R6 sensor. But yet we've got more data with the R7 than we do with the R6 Mark II. Trade-offs once again. Um, built-in flash, nope for neither one of the cameras. So your, your built-in flash is a thing of the past. Both cameras use dual slot SD cards. So you've got two slots and each one of those slots uses an SD card. But remember that this is firing very fast, both cameras, and so you're going to need a, a, an upgraded SD card. Your old SD card just won't give you the performance that you're looking for with these newer cameras. The battery life, both of them use the same battery, and you're going to get 760 shots on the R6 Mark II, and you're going to get 600 shots out of a battery on the R7. Now, 760 shots, unless you're just firing off a lot of action, is probably going to last you for a day. But I would always suggest that you have an extra battery in your hand because these mirrorless cameras use battery when we're reviewing photos, when we're looking through the viewfinder, when we're doing all kinds of other things. There's a lot of battery usage that's going on in these, in these cameras, not just in how many photos we can actually take. So always have two batteries, um, one in the camera and one in your pocket, and make sure that they're always both charged as well. Um, your sensor type in both cameras is a dual pixel CMOS autofocus 2, which is great, which means that we have the same high-tech sensor in both cameras. Um, both cameras have image stabilization in the body, and we have got eight stops in the Canon R6 Mark II, and we've got what's called five axis in the R7. Sorry, I can't tell you if that's the same thing, but it still means we have image stabilization in the body. Um, there is a pre-shoot capture. Hold the button down before you take the picture of the bird. If the camera is all set properly, then the camera is recording before the bird takes off or the athlete takes off. So that's called pre-shoot capture in Canon world. Both of cameras have that and both of them capture 30 frames per second in the pre-shoot. Remember, you've got to set your camera to do this accordingly. Another strong advantage for using the R7 over the R6 Mark II is that the R7 with its crop sensor has lenses that Canon is now introducing for it and those lenses do not cost as much or do not weigh as much as the older lenses, older, two years old, but the older lenses. For example, this is the um, professional level 24 to 105 but this is the new 24 to 105 that has been introduced for the crop sensor cameras. And this lens is only $399. So Canon has introduced several new lenses for this new crop sensor cameras, the R7 and the R10, that are a lot less expensive, but equally good quality as we would get in the professional level lens. So there's a new 100 to 400 millimeter lens that will go with your R7 that costs a lot less money. And there's a new 24 to 200 that once again doesn't cost that much money, but you might find that that would be a nice lens that you would like to have in your repertoire. So comparing the two cameras, R6 versus the R7, I think a lot of this is going to depend on pocketbook and also a lot of this is going to depend on how many other lenses you're going to end up having to buy and where the pocketbook fits on those other lenses. Also remember those other lenses are going to be a little lighter with the R7 camera and they're going to be a little bit heavy if you go with the professional level, level lenses by Canon. So which camera should you buy? I've tested both cameras. The autofocus is impressive in both cameras. I think it boils down to the pocketbook 
And it might boil down also to a little bit of a weight advantage. The R7 is going to be a little bit lighter, especially if you add the new lenses to it. And the R6 Mark II is going to be a little heavier, especially if you add the more professional lenses to it. Both cameras are good. I've tested both of them on autofocus. I'm impressed with both cameras. So I think it all boils down to which one of these cameras is going to fit in your hand the best and which one of these cameras is going to fit your e economics the best. So I am Kathy Adams-Clark. Thanks for watching my video today. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. If you'd like to see another video, give me a suggestion and I'll do that as well. If you like what I'm doing, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to be kept up to date with future videos, please push that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Kathy Adams-Clark and I appreciate your time.